This week's podcast is all about getting ready to start school. Now, if any of you are looking for tips for transition between school years or transition to high school um, and those sort of checklists I normally send out, they'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. But I just wanted to do a deep dive into really looking at starting school because this year I've been doing this amazing um, sort of mentoring uplift program with some amazing educators in Queensland and we've been having um, sort of our Zoom calls over the year and it's been fantastic. I've absolutely loved it. And last weekend we were talking about getting ready for school and they're already doing so many wonderful things like getting kids to wear uniforms, check going to the school, walking to the school, um, lots of preparation. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember my kids doing all those things. But then I was like, hmm, neurodiverse kids need some other skills as well because it is a big change from um, early childhood through to going to a primary school. They're quite different environments and particularly if the child's been part of an early learning centre where like meals might have been provided, like is this child used to lunch boxes? Do they know how to unwrap things? So I thought, look, let's do some deep dives into um, tips for starting school, but also separation anxiety. This could be a huge thing we need to think about now, starting the child getting ready for school. Um, and then um, some of my favourite resources, because so often now in our beautiful play-based curriculum, which I love for our early childhood children and educators, um, school's a little bit more structured. School is um, quite different to na- today now because early childhood programs are so much more, um, you know, going with the child, w- um, working around them, which is great. But what if they start school and they've got a teacher who's like, now's mat time, now's drinking time, you know, much more structured and routine, which many primary schools still are. So we need to help the child transition And for many of my children with autism spectrum, particularly, this is a big change, just a sensory, you know, like the toilets. Maybe in preschool or early childhood, it was a lovely light bathroom, um, often like very supervised, whereas a lot of schools, the toilets are like a separate building and horrible. And I know my kids... um, There were spiders in there. They were smelly. So there's so many things to think about. So um, I've put some tips together for you about successful orientation and transition, plus some tips to think that the children can do some skills to check in with. So make sure and some great separation anxiety tips, including um, some tips from parents. So make sure you download that. If you get my e-zine, you would have got it this week as um, a download. And I highly recommend that you do that. Um, and for early childhood educators listening, I have got my, so in May, I did my course as a full day live virtual course, my online course, which obviously you can watch anytime on demand. But a lot of early childhood educators wanted to do the course and they just couldn't get released. So I asked people what day of the week and what time would work. So what I'm doing, I'm running it over two afternoons from four till seven. Now, I just realized five minutes ago, I'm like, oh, daylight savings, that's going to mess it up a little bit. So I apologize. There will be a replay. So even if you get there late, you can always jump on the replay later. Um, And of course, you can do the course anytime online on demand. But I just wanted, if any of you prefer live virtual, it's going to be on a Wednesday because people said Wednesday was the best day for them. So from the 23rd and 30th of October from four to seven. So I hope you can join me for that. And it's going to be like with all of my live virtual, I'll send you a little show bag. Um, There's going to be some lollies and sensory tools in there and um, it'll be really fast and interactive. We'll just do one little short break. So I hope you can join me for that. Um, There'll be certificates. Um, What else do you need to know? Yeah, um, for those of you in New South Wales and ACT, it's accredited five hours if you're looking for something. Um, And again, you can always do it online on demand if it doesn't work for you. So, um, So tips for starting school. So first of all, I sort of alluded to this before, but 
Can the child manage their lunchbox? So a lot of families go and buy the lunchbox over the holidays. Is it a zip? Is it a pull-off? Like, like a lid? Like what, what do they need to know? So ask the families to go and get that now. Okay. The other thing, go and get the school shoes now. If they're going to transition to those heavy leather shoes and they're used to wearing, um, you know, their runners, even the socks, ask the families to go and get those now to actually desensitize them, but get them used to these things. So there's not so much change all at once. Can they unscrew um, and re-screw up their drink bottle lid? I've had kids who know to unscrew it but don't know how to screw it up and then they get it leaks and then they're like crying and devastated. So do they know how to unscrew and screw up the top on a drink bottle? How about do they know how to use now, depending what state you're in, a bubbler, a fountain, do they know how to use that? A lot of schools now have where you can refill your water bottles like the ones you see in parks. Do the children know how to fill their water bottle when it's empty? So check these things. What about this one? What is their food going to be wrapped in? So if they're used to being given their food, if they're at preschool or early childhood, do they know how to use cling wrap or a glad wrap or a Ziploc bag? Like, do they actually know how to unwrap things? Or, you know, I I love those reusable, um, the beeswax. My daughter bought me some of those. Do they know that they put it, they don't throw it in the bin? Do they know how to go and throw things in the bin? Like, these are all really important skills. What about opening yogurts or tins or, um, you know, barbecue shape packets? Can they do that? Now, what about can they zip and unzip their school bag? Sometimes the bag has like a little bit on the front and a like a little zip on the front and a big bag on the side or, you know, it could be quite different. Check out what that is. Have a look. Can they do that? I would also be looking, does your school have a book bag? Because a lot of schools have the bag on the back of the chair. I Particularly in New South Wales, I see this. And some of my children, like everything's in there, their lunchbox, the whole, like actually showing them how to use that book bag, what goes in there, maybe practicing that at preschool and early childhood. If the school uses tote boxes or book bags, like showing the children how to use it. Don't just assume they know how to do it. Um, Obviously hats, wearing a hat. But is it a school uniform hat? So again, do we need to go and get that hat and practice wearing it? Parents, you can practice it on weekends and so forth. I mean, I had a beautiful mum many years ago that she got herself the hat. So like over summer, they're all wearing the school hat because her son felt it was weird wearing a school hat out of school time. So they just made that broad brim hat, the whole families. Um, putting on their shoes and socks, really important. So, and again, maybe go and get those shoes. Um, uh, They might be used to a Velcro fastening, now have laces. There's some great videos on YouTube. I'll try and connect to them on teaching children to do up shoelaces. But I'm a big fan of backward chaining, which is where the child does, instead of starting from the beginning, which is so frustrating, just do the last step, which is pulling the bunny ears, right? And do it go backwards. So backward chaining is where the child does the last step. The same with the barbecue shapes. You might pull the packet apart and the child just does the last step. Yes. So think about doing the last step. Um, oh, this one. Can they take off their own jumpers or coats and put it in their bag, right? Because often in early childhood, they're used to hanging it up. Most schools don't have hooks for the bag and the jumper, or even if they do, they get so confused and lost. So they're better off having that jumper they can put in their, learn to put their jumper in their bag. So check they know how to do that. I would also, when I go on orientation, I always show the children where lost property is. And I go, look, if, if you lose something, this is where you go and look. There's jumpers, there's drink bottles, schools, you know what it's like. But often my children don't even know where that lost property is. So make sure you go and show them where the lost property is. And this is a lot of children who have siblings at the school, maybe parents, you know, one afternoon, go and look at the lost property. One afternoon, go and try the fountains and bubblers. One afternoon, um, show them where the bags, how the bags, you know, hang up. Like just slowly do these different things. Um, 
Practice wearing that uniform and identify any sensory issues that could be tags and all the rest. But my friend Anna Talamans, who you know, I've written a lot of books with, Anna with Daniel, and this was the best advice. And I do talk about this with transitions for all years, but go and get them secondhand uniforms. They're already soft. Normally all the, there's no overlocking, like everything is soft. So often secondhand uniforms, cheaper, so you can buy a couple. So if they lose that jumper, you can have a backup jumper, but also often softer for my children who really struggle with scratching new clothes. So if you're buying new stuff, make sure you wash it first. That would be Anna's advice with Daniel. She used to wash it six times. So up to you how many times you need to wash it, but you might need to wash it. Um, And be very aware that some of my children aren't used to buttons Um, so they might be used to wearing a t-shirt. So working on getting used to buttons because otherwise they chew them off. That's my experience. So, and careful, they're a choking hazard. So look at those sensory issues around the uniform. Um, so here's the other one, teaching school routines. And my favorite book for that is by Anna Tullamans and Rhonda, um, Dixon, who are both parents and they wrote for their boys these social scripts that they ended up putting into a book called How to Stop Your Words from Bumping into Someone Else. I believe you should be reading one of these books every night to our children. Um, and for I love this, that for many of our children, um, they need to learn the school school communication. So getting someone's attention, starting a conversation, interrupting, asking someone to play, asking to join in someone else's game. What if the person says no? What if the person says you can't play? Waiting in line, waiting on the mat, waiting at your desk, um, how to speak in a soft or loud voice. This is very important. So a different voice in the classroom to the playground. How to ask for help in the classroom. What to do when you lose. Listening to others. This is such an important one. How to say sorry. This I've used this for many years. Um, saying thank you. And here's one of my other favorite ones that so many of my children in primary school struggle with. How to ignore someone who's ignore how to ignore someone who's annoying you. So often teachers and teacher assistants or education support staff say, just ignore that person. A lot of my children end up stalking that person. They don't know what ignoring is. So you need to teach this. Um, so parents, I would highly recommend you get this book. I have had so much success with it. So It has little black and white line drawings and it will say something like this, asking someone to play. You would ask someone to play because you want to have fun with them. Think about who you want to play with. Go up to that person. Make sure the person is looking at you. Say hi. Then say, would you like to play with me? Wait for the person to answer you. Now, All of us just learn this innately. For my neurodiverse children, they need to be taught this explicitly. Now, what I love, you can make variations on this. You can practice it. You can role play it. But having it written down like this just makes such a difference to my children. I love this book because Anna and Rhonda have actually used this with their children I recommend that you actually, parents, read this as like a bedtime story every night for getting ready for school because it's also going to bring up a lot of conversations like putting up your hand to ask for help. Have that You don't do that at the dinner table. They mightn't have done that at preschool. They might have done it on the mat, but maybe not at a table. So thinking about all these skills, so important. So the How to Stop Your Words from Bumping, I highly recommend you look at that. Um, Anna has also written a beautiful book, which I love, called I'm Going to School, which is a workbook for children who are beginning preschool or school. And a lot of these tips are great for starting preschool too. So in this book, I love it. It, you add in your own photos. It has like a calendar of when you're starting school. You put in a photo of the school, a photo of a map, how they're going to get there in the car, um, a map of um, the um, 
sorry, a map of the whole school, a photo of the child in the school uniform, a picture of the teacher. Um, anyway, so many cool things to, and I will put um, a video up on Facebook this week. So make sure you ha- of Anna showing you how she's used the book and a demo of all the pictures she puts in it. So I highly recommend I'm going to school. It's going to save you a lot of stress if the child's got that to refer back to. And families, if you did one for preschool, you can revisit it and update it for primary school too. Now, hold on to your hats, haha, because some of you are not going to like this because I think we are not getting our ready children ready for school unless we teach them to cut, paste, draw. Um, and many of you who have my early years book know I have in there like teaching the main things a child needs to learn to draw step by step, a face, a house, a tree. You know, these are very important skills. Now, I know in our early childhood, you would say, Sue, but in our play-based curriculum, we put that out. It's up to the children. I know, but this is a neurodiverse child and guaranteed when they go for orientation or start school, People are going to ask them to do a drawing and some of my children are going to be overwhelmed that. So I would prefer that they've actually learned how to draw a face, how to draw a sun, how to draw a tree, how to draw a house. Gave on us and I believe. Just teach them those few things and it gives them a starting point. So when the teacher says go back and draw a picture of what you did in the weekend, they've got those beginning skills. The same. Can they paste, you know, pasting on their name to their work? These are all important skills. Now, neurotypical kids pick them up really fast, but some of my children don't like glue sticks or, um, you know, actually some of my children eat the glue sticks, you know, but maybe you need to practice this. And parents, you can do this at home if your preschool's not doing these things. Then a book by Jody Lee called Visual Learning Um, It comes from um, originally Jodie worked at Aspects Building Blocks program and it is a whole lot of amazing worksheets to help children learn just skills like days of the week, learning weather, learning numbers, learning to count, learning numerals, which is the writing of the numbers, you know, actually setting up a schedule, getting them used to what they're going to be doing at school, Um, doing the alphabet, Um, just, um, you know, practice like classifying animals, practicing doing worksheets, because I go into schools all the time and I can tell you they all have books with worksheets in them or, you know, a whole book they might work through. So I think this is really important for getting children ready for school. Now, The other problem I have is many of my children have terrible motor skills and I mean can't hold a pencil very well. You know, they're very good on their devices when they just use one finger at a time or some of my children can't even sit on the mat because they don't have the core skills and if any of you do yoga or Pilates, you know how important those core skills are. So I love visual learning for actually getting children ready with some worksheets Um, and getting them some of those pre like numbers, writing numbers, letters um, and so forth because I don't want this child to be frustrated and turning up at school and every other child seems to be able to write their name or um, already knows how to cut and paste. Some of my children will get very anxious because they don't have these skills. So the Motor Skill Flip Book, which is by Sally McNamara. She's been on the podcast a few times. She's an OT. She's amazing. I highly recommend preschool teachers, why don't you do some of these activities with the whole group? Because my guess is it's not just my neurodiverse children who actually need help with some of these skills. So I'm going to recommend that you do this for the whole group because they're all going to learn core strength, shoulder stability, gross motor skills, fine motor skills, pencil control. And what you can do is set up little activities for the children and just have them out each day that help with those five areas. So there's blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And you could just flip to those. Okay, here's a so for our gross motor, today we're going to do some rolling. So the child's going to lie on the ground and roll sideways over and under in one direction and the other. It could just be a fun activity you do during the day. And 
for our green one for that day, which is our shoulder stability, how about some arm circles? And for our core strength, how about we do some kneeling? Or when Sally came on the um, podcast, she said, just getting children to lie on their tummy when they're doing activities and like reading, you know, getting to lie and sort of push up. Is that called the cobra? I've forgotten what that's called, but that sort of position. And then our fine motor might be Play-Doh making pizzas. Um, And then our pencil control might be just drawing vertical lines. Yeah, just up and down, drawing vertical lines. Yes. So you can do that on a whiteboard. You can do it in the sand. You can do it on a fence, doing painting with paintbrushes. These are all the ideas in Sally's book. And then you can flip and the next day, okay, we're going to do beanbags under our legs. We're going to do the dog and the cobra. We're going to do rolling on a ball for core. We're going to do Play-Doh eggs and we're going to do tracing circles. It's really quick. But what I think you'll find is that you will see massive improvement in the children's ability to undo their barbecue shapes packets to do cutting activities to do drawing activities because Sally would say babies don't start with little fine motor picking up things it comes from your core children learn to roll over first then to crawl so there are steps and so often people look at the fine motor and forget you actually need the core same with putting up your hand I'd love every early childhood educator to go back and observe How do the children put up their hands? If they're holding up their hand and having to hold it with their other hand in the air, that shows you they've got poor core. If they can't just hold up their hand one arm at a time. So that might be an activity you do. On the mat this week, put one hand up and then swap and put the other hand up. Can the children do that? Because in primary school, they need to be able to put their opposite to their dominant hand up. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if they're right-handed, their left hand needs to be in the air. If they're left-handed, their right hand needs to be in the air. So I want you to try that this week. I'm just doing it in the air. I should make this podcast visual. You would laugh at me if you saw me sometimes. I'm acting like I'm talking to you. So I think getting ready for school resources, the motor skill flip book, visual learning, I'm going to school, how to stop your words from bumping, and dare I say, my The Early Years book, The Foundation for All Learning. The other thing I want you to go back and test, so we're going to test there, can they put one arm in the air or the other? Then in my Early Years book, people often ask me where to start. And I think there's four key skills to start school. Can they ask for help? And I don't mean coming up and tapping you madly on the arm. That isn't how you ask for help. So can they ask for help? Can they finish when you tell them to finish? Because some of my children cannot finish and move between tasks. So can they finish? Can they wait? Such an important skill. Can they actually wait? Can Do they have plan Bs? And plan Bs are if they don't get something they want, are they happy to do something else? If they don't get the partner they want, are they happy to do something else? If they don't win, do they have a plan B or do they um, struggle to um, regulate their emotions? So I think all of those things are just so important for starting school. The other thing I think that builds on those is can they share? Sharing is so important for school readiness, okay? And there are states, sorry if you can hear me flicking the pages, I had I downloaded a list of different stages of sharing and I think it's really important. So the first stage of sharing is everything's mine, 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 yes? And that's normally two to three years of age. The second stage is where children start to learn that some things belong to other people. So do the children understand that that's someone else's drink bottle or food, yes? And that's normally three to five. The third stage is can they learn to lend a toy and get it back so are they happy to share things with other people and this is normally four to five by the time children start school they should be aware everything's not theirs that things belong to other people and they can share and give things to other people they can actually share things with other people but they can also respect 
that some people don't want to share things that are special to them or they might want, might want to share their food because they, um, you know, that we, they don't love to share their food. That's their lunch, you know. So knowing that is really, really important. So it's important we look where are they up to is sharing. So can they ask for help? Can they finish? Can they wait? Do they understand if they don't get something they want, that there can be an alternative, a plan B? And where are they up to with sharing? I think these are very important skills that we need to think about in our getting ready for school. And for some of our children, the good news is it's only October. We've got time to work on all these skills. We've still got a good, you know, October, November, December, January, February before they start school or some of them will start in January. So I would love you to have a look at that. Now, most um, departments, and I know New South Wales do, offer like some really good getting ready for school, starting the big day, you know, the night before, lay out the shoes and socks, make sure your child's got their morning teen lunch, help them pack their school bag, having a spare set of undies and socks and a change of clothes in case they have a toilet accident. But I think let's do all that now. Let's get them used to changing themselves if they have an accident in the preschool. Let's get them used to packing their school bags. So I'd love you to think about that. Um, the other one that I thought was really good on the New South Wales website, and I know I used to do a lot of this getting children ready for school when I was working in outreach, sunscreen. You know, a lot of them are used to the early childhood educators putting on the sunscreen, but do they know how to put it on themselves? Um, and all of those really important things. But also in the tip sheet this week is some great 13 tips around separation anxiety. Um, in my experience, you've got to look at these nice and early, making sure you've got the routine with the child, maybe practice that. I wouldn't be doing it on day one because guess what? The child, everyone's anxious and there's lots of parents around. One of my top tips for transition is to actually see if you can go in the day before to the school. Um, normally teachers are in there the day before school starts, so maybe go in and do that. But I would be practicing the routine, but also talk about what happens if something goes wrong. Um, but have a look at the um, the ideas in the, um, in the tip sheets. And I have done a whole podcast on that and I haven't got the episode with me, but I will let you know what episode that is. I'll link to it in the um, notes from this podcast. So I hope you've got some great ideas. I hope that you're ready to sort of go back and think about looking at all the children um, and the ones that might just need a few more tips and strategies, the families that might need some tips, parents listening, think about the things you can do to prepare the child. Don't assume they're just going to work it out. I would be, you know, be prepared. I prefer that we've overthought it than underthought it because it's a big step for many of our children, particularly if they've been the same early childhood for a few years. Um, so I highly recommend that. Don't forget, I would love to see you at my live virtual workshop over two afternoons. I hope you can join me for that. But if you can't, don't worry, you can do the course online on demand at any time. It's just I know some people prefer online on demand and some prefer actually coming along on the day and um, being there like live. It forces them to do it, dare I say. It creates a bit of discipline. So best of 